Few people have firsthand experience with lumbotomized patients. For many of U.S., any contact with these convalescents comes via Hollywood. The searing image at the end of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest of Jack Nicholson as Randall Patrick McMurphy lying comatose. Hopefully, we've all experienced enough to know that Hollywood doesn't always tell it like it is. After all, what would be the point of a medical procedure that turns the patient into a vegetable? Then again, perhaps this is the reason that lobotomies have taken a place next to leeches in the healthcare hall of shame. What exactly is a lobotomy? Simply put, it's a surgical procedure that serves the pass of communication between the prefrontal lobe and the rest of the brain. This prefrontal lobe, the part of the brain closest to the forehead, is a structure that appears to have great influence on personality and initiative. So the obvious question is, who the hell thought it would be a good idea to disconnect it? It started in 1890 with a German researcher, removed portions of his dog's brain. He noticed afterward that the dog was slightly more mellow and the lobotomy was born. The first lobotomies performed on humans took place in Switzerland two years later. The six patients who were chosen all suffered from schizophrenia, and while some did show post-op improvement, two others died. Apparently, this was a time in medicine when an experimental procedure that killed 33% of its subjects was considered a success. Despite these results, lobotomies became more commonplace, and one earlier proponent of the surgery even received a Nobel Prize. The most notorious practitioner of the lobotomy was American physician Walter Freeman who performed the procedure on more than 3,000 patients, including Rosemary Kennedy, the sister of President John F. Kennedy, from the 1930s to the 1960s. Freeman pioneered a surgical method in which a metal rod was inserted into the eye socket, driven up into the brain, and hammered home. This is known as a transorbital lobotomy. Freeman and other doctors in the United States lobotomized an estimated 40,000 patients before an ethical outcry over the procedure prevailed in the 1950s. Although the mortality rate had improved since the early trials, it turned out that the ratio of success to failure was not much higher. A third of the patients got better, a third stayed the same and a third became much worse. The practice had generally ceased in the United States by the early 1970s, and it is now illegal in some states. Lobotomies were performed only on patients with extreme psychological impairments after no other treatment proved to be successful. The frontal lobe of the brain is involved in reasoning, emotion, and personality and disconnecting it can have a powerful effect on a person's behavior. Unfortunately, the changes that a lobotomy cause are unpredictable and often negative. Today, there are far more procedures and far less destructive ways of affecting the brain through antipsychotic drugs and other pharmaceuticals. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility that Nicholson's character in Cuckoo's Nest could become zombie-like. If the movie gets anything wrong, it's that a person as highly functioning as McMurphy probably wouldn't have been recommended for a lobotomy. The vindictive nurse Ratchet is the one who makes the call, which raises a fundamental moral question. Who is qualified to decide whether someone should have a lobotomy? Thanks for watching. See you on my next video.